Good morning, folks. Welcome back. We've got to discuss some eruptions on the sun, some geophysical events, electroquakes, the real Nibiru science, and solar control of health. We are starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last day on the sun had eruptive activity on the departing southern limb and centrally on the south. Corona Holt traversing across the north as well, and we'll start the analysis with the flaring. Peak at M-class range from the departing sunspots on the south. None of those flares or ejecta from them is heading at Earth, but a faint signature may indeed have been produced by the southern filaments. The plasma ropes ripped away gorgeously from the southern hemisphere, and while they spread, circled, and came out slowly, it may present a small CME impact Wednesday or Thursday. Speaking of impact, major blizzard impacting Hawaii, and the flash floods after it stops are going to be brutal considering they also have rain on top of the melt that's coming over the next 24 hours. Big eruption on Indonesia's Mount Simaru, Death toll is into the teens, and that claim is climbing every couple hours. Villages near the volcano are buried in ash. Let's slide into the science quickly and easily with the millionth paper on pre-seismic electromagnetic signals in the atmosphere. These electroquake hints are Earth snitches singing of seismicity to come. Cool paper on stellar encounters within 100 parsecs up next. That stars having their version of the Nibiru story where a star comes in and disrupts the system. It confirmed that our closest encounter was 70,000 years ago. It was indeed the red binary Shoal star. It's 17 light years away now and not coming back. And no, there is nothing anywhere near our solar system of significant size. But it was so devastating back then and coinciding with the Toba eruption DNA bottleneck the survivors kept the story alive throughout time. How about a kick in the climate forcing realm? We're going to add it to the annular mode forcing of space weather that we already know. This study shows how much control the sun has not only over the known decadal scales, but up to the centennial and millennial scales as well. The icing on the cake is a nod to both their failure to properly record irradiance, especially during flares, and the electrochemical forcing by the particles of the solar wind. Australian team rocking it there. Last but not least, we've got two on the space weather health front, which of course also plays more strongly looking ahead to the geomagnetic excursion when that energy has a clear unimpeded shot at our environment. From decision making to skin conductivity, thousands of parameters change upon the forcing onset and development. And folks, it scales up to motor skills, energy versus lethargy, and everything touched by our circadian rhythms. While our store merchandise is closed for the holidays, you can get the PDFs of both textbooks and if you scroll down at otf.cells.com. This is your last chance to contribute to Observer Ranch and get your name on the Observer's wall. That's ending at the end of the month when we set to reopen the physical merchandise. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear, be safe everyone.